So it's August 1st, and um, it's hard to believe. Summer went by so fast. Over, over and done. <laughs> Another month it'll be fall, and I will have spent the entire summer first locked up in the house with nothing, getting in trouble. Even though I really wasn't doing anything wrong, I was just trying to survive, but it was too hard in the car, and I'm on all that, just pretty much by myself, not really eating, living by candles and battery-operated flashlights, like just the stupidest stuff just such a struggle. I mean, it's like, oh, god damn. <sighs> and uh, here I am again in Dave's driveway. <laughs> um, last weekend, we spent Saturday and Sunday together again. It was nice. We had great sex. We slept. We, he made me breakfast. He, You know, it's been happening every, every, almost every two weeks now, so they're pretty steady, consistent, like, yeah. And by the next day, or even by Sunday night, it's always me being blown off and being treated like absolutely worthless, meaningless shit. Beautiful. Yeah, it's a beautiful feeling. It's a... Uh, really helps me in my self-esteem, and, you know, and like I, I was just standing at his door, and I, I'm pretty sure he was on the other side of the window in the living room listening to me, I could hear the floor creep, um, he just, Devin said it, Devin said it months ago, like, August, um, said, Dave hates himself. And he's breaking his own heart. <laughs> 25. He knows how to have a relationship better than this shit turned out to be. Um. And Devin's always been someone who would rather talk about problems rather than run away. He always wants to talk about it. Like, everything has to be discussed and, and laid out on the table. You're welcome. No, I mean, thank you. Um, yeah, I don't know. He's, uh, he's definitely got some better coping and dealing and relationship and communication skills than, uh, 54-year-old David Cunningham. So, I, uh, once again, I, I leave his house brokenhearted. He wouldn't talk to me. Uh, lately he's been talking about a PhD that he's been talking to, and, you know, he goes online and he looks up all these things, and, you know, he says, I'm a manipulator, and, uh, I'm, um, abusive, and, and what I try to explain to him is the, the things that he put me through, the neglect, the <laughs> silent treatment, the gaslighting, the, uh, crazy making, the, um, just flat out, um, disregard for every aspect of everything. Um, I think I'm having a normal reaction. Yeah, I say things to try to get him to think, feel something. Might be a little bit of manipulation, but it's not in a, um, um, <sighs> malicious way, you know, I know he loves me, and I know that he has so many issues, and the time that he talked to me about his mom clearly opened a can of worms of feelings and emotions and fears and insecurities that he had, and uh, me being who I am, I felt it, I saw it, I knew it, and I recognized it for what it was, and, um, God forbid I ever point that out to him, um, he'll immediately go on the defense.
offensive and um, attack me for saying that I'm attacking you. You know, and it's like this classic. Like I'm not gonna be made to feel guilty about my feelings and my reactions and emotions anymore by him. That's that's sick, and for me to play along with it and feel that way about it. means I'm sick. I, I dealt with this from Bill and um, and Mike was just crazy but he was like fucking nuts crazy. Um, and uh, you know but the, the love and the family and the connection and all that that I had with Bill because of Devin and, and this and that made me highly um, uh, oh, what's the word? Why am I having problems right now? Like complacent with it, you know, because I just, you know, you just have to deal with it in order to hold on to what you have, and, uh, I didn't have a child with Dave, but I did 100% feel that I found the love of my life, which I don't really... That fucking hurts. <laughs> he doesn't give a fuck, though. I mean, he does, but he doesn't. And he'd probably let it eat him up inside quietly and privately before he'd ever decide to... step up with open arms, you know. He did that once. And, like, not too shortly afterwards, he said he regretted it and that I manipulated him to do that. Everything that he gave, like, went away. And, um, he said, like, in that email, I never made you feel like you're important. I never told you you were important. I should have done that more often. Yeah, even once or twice would have been nice. Because all you really did was make me feel like I was worth nothing. Completely nothing. Every girl that falls in love with a guy that's who's fucked up like that, you know, they always hope that they're gonna be that one that finally, you know. And I know I did some dumb shit and I know I fucked up. But, um, it wasn't gonna be any different with the way he treated me or anybody else and he's never ever ever gonna be capable of having a loving healthy relationship with anyone but I know I can I just don't want to because I want him <sighs> yeah fucking blow my brains out kidding kidding don't call fucking CPAP on me to shit and like that meme that I send him sometimes that says uh I asked you to help me because I was drowning and you just stood there and said learn how to swim If I'm ever gonna stop loving him. But I really kind of want to. But I don't. I hate even saying that. But I do. I don't. But I do. But I gotta. I have to. I absolutely have to. It's the 
will never love me.